Several weeks ago, I began a brand new sermon series entitled Fasting to Feasting. And what I mean by that is that in every one of our lives, there's always areas in our life that we need to fast from. Maybe it's from anger or resentment or unforgiveness. Maybe it's fasting from watching things that we shouldn't be watching. But we also need to be feasting, adding things to our life, especially during this season of Lent that draw us closer to Christ. And today I want to give you a sermon that I hope will inspire you and encourage you in your own walk of faith with an area of our life that I think every one of us needs to be fasting from. And today I want to talk to you about taming your tongue. From the very beginning of the Bible to the last chapter in the Bible, there's a message about watching what we speak. From the writings of our church fathers early on to the writings of them even the most recently, we hear this message of taming our tongue. Even one of the church fathers says, we, during the season of fasting, we fast from meat and dairy products only to devour our friends and our family, the people that are in our life with the negativity of our words. One church father says that we can either bring life or death to the people based upon the words that we speak. And I wonder today on this Sunday morning, how many of us are having our relationships dying because of the words that we speak? I wonder how many business relationships have been undermined by the words that someone has said over you. Can I just give you a word of encouragement? Sometimes we can take for granted the power of our words on how they impact other people's lives. And I believe that this is really one of the great spiritual battles that we're all facing. Because we have to recognize that we will never fight something that we don't think is actually a problem. Several weeks ago, I was reading this story about this monk who was on fire for Christ, so much so that he wanted to go defeat all the little demons that were out in the city that was right, um, not too far from where their monastery was. And so he goes up to the, um, to the abbot of the monastery, the Yeronda is what we call them, the leader of the monastery, and he says, Yeronda, he says, I would like to go into the city to defeat all the demons that are plaguing the people there, that are attacking the people on a day-to-day -day basis. The abbot looked over at the little monk and he said to him, sure, go ahead. So this little monk, this young monk, goes into this city, goes up street after street after street in the city and doesn't see any demons. As he's about ready to exit the city, he sees this little demon totally asleep under this tree. He ends up trying to kick this demon, but no matter what he does, this demon is just simply sleeping. Well, this young monk runs back to the monastery, and as he's running back to the monastery, he sees all these demons coming in and out of the windows, the doors of every one of those monks that were there. He runs up to the abbot, he says, Yeronda, abbot, as I was coming up, I saw all these demons that were impacting all these different rooms coming out of the church, coming out of the rooms of those monks. But when I was in the city, I just saw one little demon, and he was simply sleeping. Why is that? The Yeronda looked into the eyes of that young monk, and he said, because he already has all of those people in that city already to his own. All he's doing is sleeping because they don't see that the way that they're living is a problem. I wonder, is the little demons that are trying to attack us, are they sleeping? Do we truthfully realize the power of our words and how they impact people? No, I want to give you a word of encouragement, friends, today. Just because you think it doesn't mean that you need to speak it. I want us to pass up on negative words and start passing down positive words. I love the book of James. It's found in the New Testament, and James was one of the, really one of the true heroes of our faith, one of the true early bishops of the city of Jerusalem, and he speaks a great deal about the importance of our tongue, how powerful our words are. And so I want to pick it up in our yellow Bibles on page 312. We're looking at the book of James, Chapter 3, verses 5. So if you're tuning in online, go to chapter 3 of the book of James. We're looking at chapters five, uh, verses 5 all the way through 8. And again, that for you in the church, it's the Yellow Bibles on page 312. This is what it says. So it is with the tongue, small as it is, 
that he can boast about great things. Just think how large a forest can be set on fire by a tiny flame. And the tongue is just like that fire. It is a world of wrong, occupying its place in our bodies, and listen to this now, spreading evil through our whole being. It sets on fire the entire course of our existence with the fire that comes for it, to it from hell itself. Now just notice for a moment how it originates. It comes from the enemy. Man is able to tame and has tamed all other creatures, the wild animals, the birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one has been ever able to tame the tongue. That's where we got the title of this sermon, to tame the tongue. It is evil and uncontrollable, full of deadly poison. Several year, years ago, we heard about a fire that burnt over 500,000 acres in the state of California. Homes were destroyed. People's lives were thrown upside down. And they did some research as to how that fire started. It was just a little innocent family. They were out tenting in the, wild, in the woods, in the wilderness. And as they were putting up their tent, they were sim simply putting a, te a peg into the ground and using a hammer. And as they were pegging and hammering that little peg, a little spark, just a small spark, flew. And it landed in some brush that was very, very dry. And before you knew it, it caught the whole area on fire in 500,000 acres. I wonder, do we realize that sometimes what we think is something so small can have such a great amount of damage to the lives of the people in our lives? So what do we do about it? How do we take control of our tongue? I want to give you three areas, friends, that I hope will inspire you and encourage you today to tame the tongue. And here's the first. So these are all decisions that we need to make. Number one is we have to decide to have Christ in our heart every day. You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of the Annunciation. It's when the Archangel Gabriel came and gave the good news to the Virgin Mary that she was going to bear our Savior. It was in many ways our independence, our salvation was born that day. In fact, the hymn of that day says, today salvation has come. Because when Christ was born, it was telling all of us that I have come to carry and to bear all of your sins on my back through the cross and to set you free, not from some occupying power, but to set you free from the bondage of all of our sins. But it's interesting that the Virgin Mary, you should know this, was a young teenage girl. In fact, during that time, when a young girl had become her, became an adult, if you will, she was able to get married, and at that time, People would oftentimes marry their young daughters at their, at their teenage years. And so when the Gabriel comes and says to her, hey, listen, you're going to bear Christ. You're going to bear our Savior who's going to change the world. She says a question that's so unique. She says, how can I? Because I haven't been married yet. I haven't been with a man yet. And he responds to her and he says to her, yes, but the Holy Spirit is going to, um, you're going to get pregnant through the Holy Spirit and what is interesting for all of you to know is that the Virgin Mary was part of a faith tradition that was still and is still waiting for the Messiah to come. And she, no doubt, had friends and family that did not necessarily believe in what she was about ready to embark on. She had to be thinking in her mind that, wait a minute, I'm part of something, I'm doing something that no one else knew. In fact, she became the very first Christian. And I loved her response. She said, yes. Send me. I will carry our Savior. And can I just tell you that sometimes we get so comfortable in our own walk of faith that maybe God is looking at all of us and he's saying that I need you to draw closer to me. That is one of the great beauties of our church, that we have what is called theosis. And y'all should remember this word. Theosis literally means that I am putting off the old person and becoming more of the person that God wants me to be. In other words, I came into church this morning one way, and I'm wanting God to work in my life so I can leave this church a totally different way. And just to kind of break it on even more, 
You can't speak like Christ if you're not living your life for Christ. And I just want to encourage you today, just go all in with Christ. Let him be part of your heart, not just on a Sunday morning, but every day of your life. Here's number two, another decision we have to make. And this one may not be too popular with a lot of you, but I'm going to say it anyways. I want you to decide to put a filter on what you're hearing and what you're watching. I think so many of us can kind of think to ourselves, it's not a big deal with the music that I'm listening to or the movies that I'm watching or the things that I'm allowing to come inside of me. But the Bible says, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what you're taking in every single day is impacting the way in which you speak to people. Let me just kind of break it down even more. You can't live the life that Christ wants you to live if you're listening to music that's tearing apart the life that God wants us to live. You can't live a life for Christ if you're listening to music that's tearing it apart. And I just want to encourage all of you, make sure that you're listening to things that lift you up, that draw you closer to Christ. Make sure you're watching things that are lifting you up and inspiring you. I had a young person tell me one time, well, Father, not all that music is bad. There's a couple of good words in that song. But let me ask all of you, would you go sifting through the dumpster to just simply find a small piece of bread? How much trash do you have to get into to get that one kernel of bread? Now, my encouragement is for you, don't mess with the trash. Make sure that your focus and that your mind is always being fed with things that inspire you to be the person that God wants you to be. And here's number three. We decide to make sure that Christ is in our heart and that we decide to put a filter on what we're listening and what we're hearing. And here's number three. And that we decide to make sure that we speak words of life. In this Lenten season, it's not good enough to simply fast from what's coming in our mouth. We need to fast from what's coming out of our mouth. And I'm encouraging you today to speak words of affection. Tell the people in your life how much you love them, how much you care about them, how much you, they mean to you. Not only words of affection, but words of encouragement. Cannot tell you how many people need a word of encouragement to give them courage to do the things that they think that they can't do. And speak words of faith, telling everyone, you know what? We are in this season of Lent because we're celebrating a time in which Christ came into our world, carried the burdens of our sin, that we have no reason to be afraid because God is always with us. When we speak words of faith in a world that is struggling to stay faithful to Christ, we need to speak those words of life. We have to make that decision today. I leave you with this. There was a recent study done by the University of Arizona in which they took uh, and calculated how many words we all speak every single day. And it's interesting that you would think that men speak less than women, but the reality is that we speak probably about the same. But it averages about 16,000 words every single day that we speak. If you were to calculate that based on the average number of words that are in a book, it's about 190 books every year that we're writing. We're in many ways creating a library of words that we're saying. Let me ask you, let me ask those of you that are tuning in online, what does the library of your life look like? When people check out those books of your life, what are they saying? Would people want to know what you're saying about them? Are your words encouraging, inspiring? No, I'm telling you, friends, today that you have a decision to make. You can have the idea that one day I'll start watching what I'm saying, or you can say that today is not one day, today is day one. I'm making some decisions today to decide to let my heart be open to Christ being in it every day. I'm going to decide today to put a filter on what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing. I'm going to decide today that I'm going to speak words of affection, words of faith, words of encouragement. What is the library that is saying about you in your life? Go out today, friends, remembering this principle. Just because you think it doesn't mean you need to say it. I need to pass up 
on the negative words and start passing down positive words. I need to tame my tongue. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.